Alright, what's up YouTube? Welcome to Albion Pew Pew. So today I'll be doing this video a little differently than usual. So far all of my videos has just been a compilation of my Twitch highlights. And this video will still be that, but while you're watching these highlights, I want to talk to you a little bit about what you're seeing, especially about my builds, some tips on how to play these builds, and just some general PvP tips for those of you who are still new to the PvP aspect of the game. So I get asked a lot of questions on Twitch about my build, and the most frequently asked one is probably uh, why the Guardian Helmet. So I use the Guardian Helmet in a lot of my solo builds because I think it's a very strong sustain skill. Uh, if you're wearing a cloth armor, um, it'll heal you for a pretty decent amount, and on top of that, it'll remove any damage over time effects on you, such as the Curse Qs, uh, Poisons being thrown at you, One Hand Crossbow Ease, or in this case, the Helber Bleeds. So the the standard warble build that I like to get out with will be uh, Guardian Helmet, Cultist Robe, Scholar Sandal, Four Sterling Cape, and Healing Potions. So you can see that I focus a lot on self-healing and sustain, and that's because I run into a lot of out outnumbered fights out there. Um, so I think it's very helpful in these outnumbered fights if you can just keep healing yourself while you're kiting with a Warbow and keeping the damage up. Uh, and if you could do that, if you can just keep healing yourself and keep kiting, you'll win a lot of these fights even when you're outnumbered. So for example, in this clip, uh, I, I was doing a solo dungeon dive and I dove into a group with a Great Nature Healer. And I actually end up out-sustaining this two-man group with a Great Nature Healer uh, because I focus so much on self-heals. And of course, a part of that is also because um, the healer is a great nature healer. With great nature healers, if you just avoid hitting their living armors, uh, you can actually deny them a lot of healing. If it was a different type of healer, like a druidic healer, or even just a great nature with a different W, uh, I will probably just run away from them because warbows are actually terrible at killing healers. Uh, and that's because all of your damage is in this WE combo cooldown. Um, so you don't actually have enough sustained pressure to just like out pressure these healer groups. Um, so if you're gonna copy this build, um, if you run into a group that has a healer in it, I would recommend that you just avoid them, just run away from them. All right, so to show you how strong the Guardian Helmet is, I'm gonna show you this little clip right here. And in this clip, there is no more cultist roll, and I'm not even running a Robo, so there's no kiting. Uh, it's more like engage and disengage. But anyway, I'm running a dagger pair with uh, mage robe, guardian helmet, and some kind of leather boot for refreshing sprint. I don't remember which kind of leather boot it was, but it doesn't matter much. It's just for the refreshing sprint, which is a uh, secondary run skill on the on the leather boots. All right, so we get into the same situation. We do a dungeon dive, and there's a healer. Right. And when I just saw them, they were low, one of them was low, so I just dove right in to try to keep them in combat and uh, and see if I could just kill them while they're low, but it didn't happen because the healer was the one that I hit and he had Everlasting Spirit on him. So he just went invulnerable, healed back up, but no problem, we can just disengage and try again. And here you can see that um, I'm running dash on my W and that combined with the refreshing sprint and the omelet, uh, the dash has like very little cooldown. So you can just keep using the dash to engage and disengage. And of course, all the cooldown reduction I'm running goes into the uh, E, the, your main damage skill, and your uh, guardian helmet as well. So you can, you know, so it helps you both ways. It helps you with this, with the uh, sustain as well and the damage. All right. So here I go back in for another try, and here I screw up here because uh, I used my guardian helmet way too late so if I had used it right now I would have been able to just kill the kill kill the curse right here right because um, if I if I use the guardian helmet earlier to pull off the Q stacks instead of just heal myself uh, I could actually prevent a lot of damage from his death curse because um, his death curse does damage based on how many Q stacks he's got on me, right? So if I just pull off his Q stacks, then the Death Curse would not do any damage. Um, and that's, I think that's what I'm going to do in the next engage. I think the next engage is when the Curse dies. Um, but about this build, so 
If you don't like playing ranged characters, because I'm a Warble player and I'm here trying to recommend a uh, Warble build, but if you're more of a melee player, then this build is something that uh, you can consider. And you don't have to run this build with a dagger pair, by the way. Uh, you could run it with dagger pair, black hands, broadsword, carving sword, and I've never tried this before, but you could probably run it with a spear as well. Um, but anyway, uh, this this combo right here, the uh, Major Robe, Guardian Helmet, and um, Refreshing Sprint, uh, I think it's going to become pretty popular after the next patch. I'm going to talk about why that is in a bit. Um, but the Major Robe, the Major Robe is a skill that is... Um, that is very useful uh, in the current meta because a lot of solo players right now are running cleric robe and grave guard cleric grave guard combo right so if you use the mage robe and you time it right you can actually purge the everlasting spirit from the cleric robe and if you do that then um, then the grave guard is going to be weaker as well right so a lot of times these um solo players they will be hitting you and then when they get a little low they will pop their cleric robe think thinking okay i'm gonna be invulnerable for the next three seconds so i'll just keep hitting him and w if they do that you pop your major robe real quick it's gonna pull off the everlasting spirit from them and it's gonna screw them up and of course it also works on things like bloodlust and uh, reflect and I think just now I was talking, I was busy talking, but you probably saw just now. And here I'm gonna do it again. I'm gonna pull off the Q stacks with my guardian helmet, and you see there that the death curse just like did no damage to me, right? And so here I'm gonna do another three Qs and a E, and that's the curse down right there, right? So the rest of this clip is just gonna be me killing that healer, which is gonna take a little while. So I'm going to talk about why I think this combination with the Mage Robe and the Guardian Helmet is going to be, going to be becoming more popular in the next patch. So as I said earlier, right now a lot of solo players are running Cleric and Graveguard as a combo. Uh, and that gives them a big self-heal, a big reset for them. So if they get low, they can just like reset their HP and keep going. Uh, but starting next patch, uh, they said they're going to make it so that uh, the Graveguard Helmet cannot be used for for yourself anymore. So you can't do a self-heal with it anymore. Um, and if that actually comes through, then the only helmet that gives you a self-heal right now, uh, that I can think of at least, is this one. It's the Guardian Helmet. And the best robe to go with the Guardian Helmet uh, I think is the Mage Robe. That's, that Purge, I already talked about, it's very useful. You can purge anything with it. You can purge Bloodlust. You can purge Run Skills. Uh, you can purge Fury. You can purge Everlasting Spirit, of course. Right. So I think this, this build is going to become very popular soon. All right, now we're back on the Warpole build. Uh, this is the build that we're highlighting in this video. So. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about how I play this build, and if you're gonna if you're gonna try to copy this build and give it a try, um, there are some things that you should know. All right, so the first most important thing is uh, when you're playing any kind of a warble build, uh, you really have to get used to landing these skill shots, because every skill in this build, every skill on this uh, weapon is a skill shot. So that means you can miss these skills and do no damage. Um, now, if you do end up missing a couple of skill shots and you take a lot of damage as a result, it's not a big deal uh, because we do have a lot of sustain in this build, a lot of mana regeneration, a lot of self heals. Uh, so if you do take a lot of damage from making some bad mistakes, it's not a huge deal. You can always just heal back and try again. Uh, but if you do miss all of your skill shots and uh, especially if you're playing in an outnumbered situation like this one, if you miss all of your skill shots, then that's not going to be very good for you, right? Uh, so what I recommend is uh, if you're going to give any kind of uh, Wurbo build a chance, uh, you should probably go into the arenas where it's safe 
and you just uh, get used to the timing of these skill shots, because all three of these uh, skill shots have different timings. So get used to the timing of these skill shots, and get used to landing them. And that's going to help you out a lot in playing the Warbo. Alright, so another thing to keep in mind while you're playing the Warbo is that because all of your skills are skill shots, uh, you don't actually need a line of sight to hit someone. Right? So let's say if you're playing a regular bow, uh, in order for you to be able to auto-attack people with their E, you have to have line of sight. So there can be a, like a wall between you guys. Uh, but here you see I get this guy low, he was already low from the mobs, and then I shoot E through the wall and it snipes him. All right, so that's a nice convenient little feature to the warbow, it's that you don't need line of sight to kill someone. Alright, so in this little clip, I got dove by three people, and I kind of luck out a little bit here because I pick up that shrine and it just happened to give me a speed buff. Uh, but I end up killing all three of these guys. Now, one of the most important things in playing the Warbo is that you have to keep your distance from your target, uh, which is why that you know getting that shrine really like lucked out for me. Um, if I didn't get that shrine. I might have died here because you probably saw I missed the ray of light right there, and I, I'm gonna miss another one coming up. So, um, yeah, without this speed buff, I it it would have definitely gotten a little hairy for me. So there's the second ray of light that I missed, um, and this kind of goes back to the point that I was making earlier about the warble. Um, you have to be able to land these skill shots, especially if you're playing outnumbered. You have to make these skill shots count. Right, so if I didn't get uh, the speed buff and I missed those two ray of lights, I probably would have died in this gank. But if I didn't miss those skill shots though, then I think I should have still been able to 1v3 in here. So another very important thing to learn about this build is when to use your levitate. Uh, now there are some obvious when not to's, for example, uh, don't use it when somebody can just walk up to you and interrupt you, all right, because then you won't get any heals. Uh, but also another thing is um, some of the things you can do with this levitate. It's not just a self-heal, uh, it gives you mana back and it also makes you immune to all physical damage while you're channeling it. So here, for example, uh, I used the levitate to tank the Bowcaster E, and what that Bowcaster guy is doing is uh, he activated his Bloodlust first on his Mercenary Jacket and then he eat me. So the Mercenary Jacket would have healed him for a lot of HP if he was actually doing damage to me. But because I was levitating, he wasn't actually hitting me for damage, so the Mercenary Jacket didn't heal him. All right, so that's another cool little trick here. Uh, but there's some other similar things that uh, you, you should probably think about with this levitate. For example, uh, when somebody Hellion shoots you, when a dagger pair has three Assassin Spirit Charges and they Hellion shoots you, uh, that's probably a good time for you to use the levitate. right? Because if you let them hit you first, they might just one-shot you and you never get a chance to levitate. Right? So you could use the levitate not just as a self-heal, but also to block damage. So I'm trying to say here. All right, so here I have another little tip for you. You can, you can see my skill bar that I have frost shot on. I'm using the frost shot right now just to help me get into the dungeon. Uh, I'm diving a red zone solo dungeon here, and you guys probably already know by now that in red zones you have a hostile counter at the corner of your screen. So that counter tells you how many hostile players are in your zone. And of course, this only applies to red zones, not to black zones, right? So a lot of players, they pay a lot of attention to the hostile counter when they're doing their solo dungeons in red zones. And when they see that number go up, they will just A out from the dungeon, right? Which is why I went into this dungeon unflagged. And then when I found the guy, when I saw the blue name pop up on, my, on the corner of my screen, I back off a little bit and then I flag up. And while I was flagging up, while that channel is going, that's when I change my skill from Frost Shot back to Ray of Light uh, so I can have Ray of Light ready for combat. And because the channeling of, um, uh, of flagging takes a little bit of time, so by the time you're done flagging, uh, your skill should be off cooldown already, so it'd be good to, good to go. 
And this concept, you can, like, it's not just for, uh, it's not just for Warbos. Uh, of course, you can, you know, do the same thing for if you're running, let's say, if, you're, if you want to run Hellion shoes in a melee build, um, you can change your Hellion shoes to run. Uh, let's say you're using an axe, you can change your, uh, sp your Raging Blades to Adrenal Rush, right, just to help you get into the dungeon. Right, and then once you find your targets, you back off of their screen, and then you flag up. And while you're flagging, you can change all of your skills back to combat mode. And by the time you're done flagging, you'll be good to go. All right. All right. So in this clip, I'm running a slightly different build. Uh, I'm running a baton bow, a royal helmet, and a demon cape. That's that's the deviations. The rest of his I'm still the coldest cow and the scholar sandals. And what I'm trying to show you in this guy's um, the point I'm gonna try to make is um, uh, you want to as much as you can. You know, obviously don't like over die for this, but as much as you can, try to focus the guys that can interrupt your levitate first, right? So in this case. You can see that that guy is running a soul scythe, right? So if he didn't die first, I would never be able to use my levitate because he has so many things that he can interrupt me with. But luckily, because they didn't know I was there, be, uh, goes back to the point I was trying to make earlier. By the way, you go into the dungeon unflagged, right? So because I was unflagged, they didn't know I was there, and they were just doing some mobs. And uh, he got hit by a knockback from the mob right into me. So I hit him with my combo here, which is uh, uh, an auto attack for Demon Cave, a ray of light to lock me inside the Demon Cave, and then a bat and bow E while he's still snared, and then a royal helmet stun while he is still snared inside the bat and bow E. Right, so he pretty much got the lead in one combo there, and I was only able to finish his two teammates because he wasn't there to interrupt my levity. But because you'll see here, I actually get really low uh, because of that Heron Spear stun, right? But then I get my full channel levitate off, and I was able to survive and kill those two. All right, so um, again, you, if the situation allows it, try to kill the guy that can interrupt your levitate first. It will it will help you out. Okay, I got one last useful clip here, and in this clip, I'm gonna talk about the engagement rules of the free PvP zones in Red Zones because a lot of people don't really seem to understand them. But the way it works, once you step inside the circle, you have three seconds. After three seconds, you'll be flagged up. And once you're flagged up in the free PvP zone, uh, you'll be able to attack anybody and be attacked by anybody that's also inside the free PvP zone. But uh, as long as you remain in combat with this guy, uh, even after you leave the zone, you will still be able to hit them, and they will still be able to hit you. And you're going to see here, I chase this guy out of the zone, and I'll still be able to hit him. And not only that, uh, if you are flagged up by the free PvP zone, people that are outside, the blue people out there, they cannot hit you, because you're not technically PvP flat. So you can see here, his friend comes up to help him, but he couldn't, because his friend hasn't been inside the free PvP zone yet. Right, so if you're playing around these free PvP zones, you could use that to your advantage. Okay, so that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed it or found it useful, please give me a like and a sub. And don't forget to come check out my Twitch channel. I'll have the link to my Twitch channel in the video descriptions below. And also, those of you who have watched my Twitch before, you probably know that I do a lot of little giveaways on my stream. But on top of the ones that I normally do, I've also started doing some themed weekly giveaways. So for example, this first week, we're going to give away all the claws that I got from killing the people that tried to gank me with claws. So I'm thinking next week, maybe I'll do all the capes or something. So if you want to get in on that, make sure you have me followed on Twitch, and I will see you there.